everybody, and welcome to Libromancy, a podcast about the magic of books. I'm your host, Josh, and today I'm going to be talking about a Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. So let's learn the magic of books. This was a really fun book. I really enjoyed reading it. I had a lot of fun. It was a little interesting. I had some misconceptions about things that I'd heard kind of going in and that I I thought I was going to be surprised by and that I wasn't. And so I must have just misheard or misunderstood what people were saying. And I'm not sure why or how I misunderstood it. I, I think I thought there was supposed to be a reveal of some kind of kind of who like the bad guy is in this book, but it's not. <laughs> that's that's about as much as I can say. I don't want to get into uh, the spoiler situation without it. This is uh, an interesting book. It's a, a school, magic school book. I love those books. I think that's a really fun way to learn, to see the magic. It's an interesting way that this school works, that it just gives you a bunch of spells out of the void, and they bring it to you, but if you don't know that language, then you have to learn it. Kind of crazy. And truly, I wish I was like half as smart, just like intellectually, because, you know, everybody makes dumb decisions, but I wish I was like half as smart as the characters in these kinds of books, where they're able to learn languages in months, or, you know, weeks to months, and they're able to memorize things really well. And I'm like, man, I can I can remember some things, and I can, you know, I'm okay at memorization, but like, the amount that they're doing versus the amount that I can do is just different. And I'm like, man, I wish I had a little bit of that. That would be pretty nice, right? So now the writing, I think it's good writing. Naomi Novik is a fantastic writer. I've really liked all her other books that I've read. Now I haven't uh, finished the Temerary series, but I am working on that eventually. But I just, I don't necessarily like the fourth wall breaking that this book does. It doesn't do it often, but it's just the style of writing is that uh, Galadriel, our main character, is telling us kind of what's going on. And for most of the book, it was just fine. Kind of feels the same way as like the Dresden Files where they're like recounting their story of what happened. But there was one point where they say, you know, the main character says, reader, I ran away. And it's like, well, that just does not that does not jive with me i don't i don't like being called out as the reader yeah, certain so it makes sense this one i didn't feel like it really made a ton of sense at least for me like it just i didn't like it that's all i can say so everything else i really liked about the book just not not that so let's talk a little bit about spoiler section let's get into our spoilers so be warned if you haven't read a deadly education turn back now but here we go so uh, let's talk about galadriel as our main character she is she's an interesting main character because she has to almost actively deny her magic because her magic is too destructive. I have, she has world ending power. Anytime she wants to write a spell, she gets something deadly, something dangerous, something that will destroy and wreak havoc on everyone and everything. You know, she asks for a spell to light a flame and it gives her a spell to like conjure mortal flame, which, okay, this is one other small nitpick is the word mortal flame started to lose all meaning to me at the end. Just Say it's really fire, or it's a big fire, or destroying fire. Like, every flame does not have to be a mortal flame. And a mortal flame means a flame that's alive but can die to me, not not necessarily like a mortal flame like it will kill anything kind of a thing, right? And I got that that's what it meant, and it didn't like detract from my understanding, but at the end I was just a little tired of hearing... I conjured a mortal flame here. This will do mortal flame here. This will you just say like the flames will scour it, not the mortal flame will scour it. It just, that's all. Sorry. But her, she, so she gets a, a spell to light candle, but it's a spell to conjure mortal flame that will destroy everything. She has to be like, I have to be very careful about what I, my spells that I, I try and come up with on my own because I am really good at making spells. The only problem is that they turn out to be world-ending catastrophe-type spells. A plague, a meteor, you know? Who knows what'll happen when I create this spell? And she has to be like, I can't write them, because once I write them, they're in the library, and they're available for anybody. So I have to be, you know, I like that. That was really interesting. She's doing pure mana, which means she doesn't use any malia, which is basically like life force, so you can power your spells with mana or with malia. And if you power them with malia, depending on how in-depth you go, you know, that takes sacrificing effort, sacrificing like creatures or, you know, life force of things, right? And that takes... I mean, it changes you and makes you a Malfacer, which is somebody who does like pure Malia, and it kind of degrades your body and your spirit over time. The more you do it, the worse it is for you. 
And then you have mana, which you can accumulate just kind of through effort, which was interesting. I was really confused how they were generating their mana because it wasn't like, oh, I just, you know, I get tired and then I regenerate it and then it comes back. It was the amount of effort you put towards something makes you, make, generates you mana, basically. So when she crochets, she's generating mana. Now, if she got really good at crocheting, then she'd generate less mana because it's not about the activity. It's about the effort it builds. So push-ups, jumping jacks, those things all generate mana, right? And they, a little bit of diminishing returns, but then, you know, also gaining returns, increasing returns on your body, right? You stay fit, which is really important at the school, the Skolomant school, because it's always trying to kill you. Now, the school isn't trying to kill you, but all the mouths are. And I love the explanation that, like, well, why aren't the adults getting stuck, hit with this? So it's like, you're at the right age for the mouse to want to try and eat you because... You don't know enough to protect yourself. You taste the best and this blah, 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 right? So I like that explanation. That makes total sense. They're always trying to get into the school, which is in the void. I'm like, how do they get in? But this is makes sense. And, you know, I, I just they, they were very smart to build this school and do things. But, like, they could have done, like, a little bit more of a, like, hey, you know, we're going to have this graduation hall and we're going to have Mortal Flame cleanse it every so often. Maybe we should set the Mortal Flame in the entry point where the monsters and people leave from to go off more than once a year. Just maybe. I mean, why not? Like, what if we set it to go off three times a year? Or four times a year. Or, you know, what if we just had the Mortal Flame go off once a month just to clear out anybody who kind of gets in the bottom? You know, that's, uh, that would be very helpful if every, you know, month the graduation hall was cleaned out because, you know, what's the, the problem of this story is that our, our other kind of half main character, Orion Lake, has been saving everybody from the mouse and the Maleficent, right, which are evil creatures, and they want to eat them. And he's been saving everybody, and that's causing a problem because now there's so many of them, and they're really desperate to get people because they haven't been able to get any, so there's been more fighting, so there's more of them being brought in. And it's like, yeah, if you had that thing running every six months, the monsters wouldn't be able to whack on it until it broke. You know, maybe uh, maybe more than once a year, excuse me. If it had some little bit more protection, you know, oh, it's foolproof. Well, foolproof would have been there's a mortal flame ring around it 24-7 that's, you know, deactivatable if you need it. And then you can go in and fix it or make repairs and then bring it back out, right? That's, you know, undefeatable. This is... Very defeatable because it doesn't do anything for 11 months out of the year. Well, basically like 364 days, it does nothing. One day it scours the graduation hall. Now, I know and I kind of agree that like, yes, if you put them in slightly in more dangerous circumstances, they're going to learn better. They're going to be more motivated. But at the same time, there's that big diminishing returns there. If only half your graduating class survives, that is not good. But uh, I want to talk about Orion. I moved away from Galadriel, but she's pretty awesome. I love... Just the way she feels, I really felt like I got into her head, and I've never been, like, bullied or ignored like she has, but the way that Naomi was able to write it, it really made sense to me, and I really felt connected to her and her feelings and desires, so I like that. That was really, really good. You know, where everybody just doesn't like her because, as one character puts it, she feels like a rain cloud. She just feels off, and nobody will go out of their way to help her until, you know, throughout the book, as she gets closer to Orion Lake, and then things happen, and they realize oh she's not that bad you know and she's going pure mal mana so she doesn't use malia at all because she knows that if she did she would never stop and she is really really good at using malia even you know pulling it out at least because of her affinity for death and destruction but orion lake we got to talk about him for a second i don't know his deal and i'm a little i'm interested you know he seems like a good guy he's trying to save everybody maybe a little bit naive you know because they all talk about the balance and if you kill too many then there'll be too many more at graduation and nobody will survive but you know they're able to fix that by refixing the skin the the scouring equipment the cleansing machine with the mortal flames on the graduation floor it's kind of like the main thing of this book that's like the main climax of this book but orion he gets mana from killing mouse but he can't get it if he freezes them which whatever that's you know but and he really likes to kill mouse and he's been doing it for a while so i don't know is orion lake really a human because all the other humans are scared of mouse or not necessarily always scared but like they're not like oh, i'm gonna go seek this out and try and kill it or he's something different so i am really i am interesting interested in seeing where he goes what happens in the next book especially with the warning the only letter that she's gotten from her mom the whole book that l has gotten from her mom says don't trust orion lake or stay away from orion lake so she obviously knows something 
and her mom is her mom is so funny because she's like the hippie but she has these really powerful crystals that can store the mana and hers have more kind of a bang for their buck because of her lifestyle or whoever her mom's a great character even and her the relationship between her mom and galadriel is so interesting and dynamic even without like a lot of communication because we're always learning stuff about how they lived in the past or learning about this and i want to go into an enclave and i she her mom doesn't want to she's like well you'll make the best decision for you you have to do what's right and then she learns at the end she's like no i am probably not going to go into an enclave because just too dangerous it's just a lot of fun they're very good todd the character todd i think he felt a little out of place as the ostracized student that he kicked, he pushed one of the other students into the void and left them there to st- take his room. And it's like, cool, but then it doesn't come up. He doesn't come help in anything. So I was like, why is he here? Maybe he'll be more important in the next books. I really like that. So Liu, one of her friends that she makes an alliance with, you know, halfway through, fourths the way through the book, she's the one that I thought was going to be revealed as a Malfacer. So in my mind, or what I had kind of heard, was that, you know, she's going to school and there's a Malfacer, somebody using Mal- Malia, and they're killing other students, but nobody knows who it is and they're trying to figure it out to stop it. That's kind of what I thought the book was about. And then they're revealed, oh, it's Liu, she's the the Malfacer. But that's not it, because it's kind of like an open secret that she's the Malfacer, because she brought the mice in and you use the mice to bring, you know, to fuel your Malfacy, right? your, to fuel your Malia, right? And that was not the case at all. And so I was like, oh, okay, I'm just off. And it was, it was good. I wasn't complaining about it. I just was surprised because it wasn't what I kind of thought I would be going into. So it is what it is. Not bad. Now, as for some more technical things, I really liked the pacing. I thought it was really well paced where we move forward and then we kind of slow down then we we speed back up you know things happen and then we relax it's so funny that orion actually likes her because she doesn't you know kind of suck up to him or like put him on a pedestal and he she's mean to him and she's like yeah i'll just kind of fake date him i'll tell people we're dating but like i'm not planning on really dating him and then orion's like yeah we are dating and like they're about to be killed by some mortal flame again before she can conjure her own and he grabs her hand and then he goes and he kisses her and then she knees him and kicks him off. And he's like, she's like, what are you doing? Like, and then she conjures some mortal flame to protect them. And she's like, and then I thought about it for like one second. And like, why would he grab my hand when we're about to die and like kiss me right before like we're about to die? And she's like, oh, he's like, you are dating me? Like, you actually want to date me? And it's just so funny. And then she runs away, you know, and. I love throughout the book that everybody always sees Orion saving her and she saves him and nobody sees it and they keep this little running count. It's just fun. And it's not even like, it's not an enemies to lovers kind of a trope, like because it's more just like iffy, not friends to friends to lovers and they're not at that point quite yet of course but like it was so fun <laughs> just their interactions and why are you doing that don't you have any self-preservation come back over here don't don't stick your head in that thing without looking first like did you not see this and i love that he just blows up and burns malls all over the place kind of regardless of the consequences and in this case consequences being like great that one exploded now all the food over here is not safe or like now i'm drenched in like guts and gore like thank you so much i really appreciate that i wanted that to be you know my favorite thing so i liked it i am really looking forward to the second book the last graduate obviously it kind of indicates that they are going to graduate as i was unsure if they were going to try and graduate early in this book or not and they did not so i'm excited to see what's going to happen it was a really fun book i enjoyed it definitely looking forward to the second one the third one that's just coming out this year I think it's in October of 2022. So thanks everybody for listening. And thanks to David Hillowitz for the intro and outro music. That's going to wrap up my discussion of A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. Please like and subscribe wherever you get your podcast from. And I do have a Patreon that's available at patreon.com slash Libromancy if you're interested in supporting the show. And always remember to learn with the magic of books. Mm-hmm.